Uh, I'm a developer relations engineer with the Filecoin Foundation, and today I'm really excited to share a super impactful and valuable project that I've been had the pleasure of working on for the last few months, and it's called uh, the Lilypad Project, or well, the Lilypad Network now, so yep, that is a hint. Um, I just want to take a moment to recognise the team behind this brilliant work and who I wouldn't be able to give this talk without, so shout out to our amazing engineering team in Luke and Kai and our head researcher Levy, who I believe is here, and of course to David for his uh, leadership here as well. So, quick agenda for today. I want to run through where this fits into the Filecoin vision, then of course fill you in on the aim of the Lilypad network, and there's that word again. Uh, and then I'll hop straight into a code demo to show you how to use Lilypad. And finally, I'm going to finish off with some thoughts on why I think distributed compute networks like Lilypad are the future of Filecoin and of Web3, and some of the applications I think it's going to empower. Um, so just to set the scene, what is the Filecoin vision? Uh, as you're all likely aware, here at Filecoin and Protocol Labs, we have a mission. And that mission is to build the foundation for a decentralized internet. Uh, and it includes four key components. Um, this decentralized internet is one that we want to allow for the democratization of data and access to data. So non-dependent on restraints of geography, of resources, or of level of access to services. Uh, and one that not only solves some of the big social and ethical challenges of the kind of Web2 uh, cloud stack, but also some of the engineering challenges, so including pricing, resilience, and distribution. Um, so we've so far built out the largest decentralized storage network globally, uh, an impressive feat in itself. And we've also layered on then this powerful programmability with FBM. And I know the Filecoin Saturn retrieval market is well underway to allow for faster movement of data across the globe. And I know they're here too, I just saw them, so welcome. Uh, and the fourth pillar of this mission is computation. And to me, this is kind of where data becomes truly useful. So after all, an LLM is nothing without the ability to kind of train and compute on data sets. So it's really my strong view here that distributed computing is going to unlock this next generation of really web scale decentralized applications and bring this like power of robust compute to Web3. Uh, and this is where projects like Bakuyao and Lilypad live. So. In case the name Bakuyao isn't familiar to you, though it probably is, Bakuyao is a peer-to-peer -peer open computation network or a network of nodes which provides this platform for public, transparent and optionally verifiable computation. Uh, I won't say too much about this one though. If you want to hear more about it, I recommend you stick around for David Aronchik's talk later. He's the expert here. Uh, he might also talk about cheese, one of his favourite things, and we are in France after all. So. Uh, if Bakuyao is a distributed compute uh, network, though, what is Lilypad? Uh, well, Lilypad leverages the power of Bakuyao, and then it combines it with on-chain, uh, on-chain, sorry, <laughs> guarantees and crypto economic incentive models. So, for those of you that might have been following us for a while, you might remember the original proof of concept work we did, uh, and this operated kind of like a relayer or bridge for calling Bakuyao off-chain compute jobs and receiving the results directly in your smart contracts, including FVM. Uh, so this was kind of a precursor to the on-chain Lilypad network, or Lilypad v1, which leverages Bakuyao uh, and key features of blockchain uh, to introduce secure scheduling, verification, and payments, and both for jobs and the network nodes. So with Lilypad v1, we're really aiming bigger. We want to build this trustless distributed compute network that really enables this internet scale data processing uh, with AI, ML, and other arbitrary compute. Uh, and this is especially kind of interesting when you think about the storage and uh, you know, large data sets we already have on Filecoin. So I'm really excited today to announce that the team has released the Lilypad testnet. Uh, Lala Chuzo, it's called, uh, is just a Solidity implementation uh, for arbitrary untrusted nodes to join networks and for users to run compute jobs via Lilypad modules. So we've loosely based it on uh, Modicum, which is a research paper which proposed this mediator approach to resolving consensus of deterministic jobs. So this is kind of the current infrastructure at the moment. This allows kind of coordination layers to match the kind of CPU, GPU demand with supply of jobs or users that want to run compute. 
So we've, mod we've modified this original paper to use some of the powerful Bakuyao uh, infrastructure available and designed this to work with IPFS and Filecoin. So let's see a demo, because that always speaks louder than I possibly could. Um, so this is the first demo, which this is the, basically the hello world of Lilypad, except it's the hello cow world of Lilypad. And this basically works via a CLI. Um, I'm not going to show it now, because I think I'm a bit over time. Uh, so firstly, you just need to install the Lilypad CLI, and then you can add your private wallet key to the terminal, and then run the CalSay module with whatever words you want. And you'll get back an IPFS CID uh, from that job running on the network, and it'll look something like this when you open it up, depending on what prompt you put in. In this case, it was Hello Lilypad, uh, but, you know, maybe utterly fantastic is a good one to go with. Uh, I think you'll agree. Uh, and that's basically it. And it's not just a CLI implementation. You can also run this from a uh, smart contract. Um, again, our next module in the Lilypad suite currently, like, uh, you can make any module you want so long as it's deterministic to run on our network. Uh, the next module we've uh, designed is a stable diffusion demo, and this is on SDXL version 9. So this is the CLI version of that demo. And we also have a smart contract version, which hopefully will run. Nope, okay. Well, the video can't be located, but trust me, no. <laughs> we do have a video. Uh, it's up on our YouTube, and I'll link to that a bit later. But basically, for the stable diffusion, uh, to run from a smart contract, you implement um, your code with an interface, and that is down the bottom there, the function receive job results. Uh, and then you just call uh, this Lilypad module, like I showed in the CLI. You input your prompt, your string, for what you want to get back. And this will return to your smart contract a Lilypad, uh, well, an IPFS, sorry, CID. And when you open that, you will have a, uh, you know, maybe a rainbow unicorn in this case or an astronaut riding a rainbow unicorn. Anything you put in there, basically. Pretty impressive results as well. Um, so that's it for that one. Uh, coming up soon, we didn't quite get to it. Oops. Okay. Uh, the next thing we're actually making is fine-tuning a model with, um, fine-tuning a stable diffusion model with LoRa. So, this actually allows for input data to go into your model and then it will output, you know, a result from that. So this is, this is a pretty uh, big step forward, we think, for distributed compute networks. Uh, we didn't quite get around to getting that one, but it will be available. Check out our docs uh, very shortly. Uh, you can also obviously run your own node on this network. It's a network, so you, you want to be able to get paid for jobs that you run on your spare GPU or, you know, CPU at home, or maybe you have a big data center, some people might have. Uh, so you could uh, run this there and uh, earn money from running those jobs. So why does all this matter? Well, in the same way that one person shouldn't really control access to social media, or one company shouldn't control access to your data, or anyone else for that matter, or access to scientific break breakthroughs, uh, centralized entities should not control access to AI advancements, or at least that's my opinion, or the data involved in them. And common human goods should really not be gate kept. And this is where decentralized AI uh, comes into play, and that we think the Lilypad network or distributed compute networks like it will be able to help. Um, so what's interesting is that it, according to this like, leaked Google article as well, it was also clear that open source AI and ML, oh, excuse me, <coughs> is already outcompeting uh, the centralized versions. Uh, and that's because they're able to define use cases and fine tune them more easily and on less data. Uh, so it, it's really interesting uh, that this came out. I was like so engrossed in it, I'm like, Wow, it's really cool that we are beating these big players that take years and years to compute these data models with fine tuning of them. One of the uh, main problems for this though, or one of the issues for open source AI is this access to GPUs. Uh, and this is a key problem for open source AI and ML to be competitive. And DPIN, or decentralized physical infrastructure networks, such as Filecoin, um, can really help to solve this. So we're hoping that leveraging Filecoin with a network, 
work like Lilypad for coordination could really allow this distributed compute model. Uh, the other problem is efficiency and pricing. So oligopolies don't make for efficient use of hardware and they don't provide good pricing models for user for users. So Lilypad can enable coordination layers for matching these CPU and GPU with supply. And I would love it if it would go to the next slide now. Okay, well, I guess it really wants to tell you about this one. <laughs> All right, here we go, finally. All right, sorry, Buster had just a bit of a network glitch there, I imagine. And now we're way ahead. Okay, sorry, the last why from me is distribu distribution. I really love this quote from Brooklyn Zelenka, who's uh, a Fission founder. Um, who said, if you look at large cloud providers, their data centers are really in North America and Europe almost entirely, and we're leaving behind the rest of the world. And I think that's something that Filecoin uh, and compute networks on top of it can really help as well. Um, I also think there's so many applications, and honestly, I listed these just off the top of my head, but there's probably so many more that you guys could come up with as well, or you know, even teach me about. Um, but Web3 uh, and AI have a really good uh, relationship, and I think Web3 can solve some of the problems we're going to see in AI as well. So Web3, for example, is incredibly good at unlocking network effects, and uh, we, this is what we can bring to both Web3 and Web2 developers, like the power of cheaper, more open, more efficient compute, combined with resilient storage, transparency, and data ownership. Um, so we've also kind of brainstormed some application and use cases, and we'd love to hear from you what you think it could be used for, and I'm getting time there, so I am going to hurry up. Uh, so these are some of the Web3 applications we think this could be useful for, a lot of which I've already talked about, uh, so I'll just uh, move on through those. Uh, we also think this could be really useful specifically in the Filecoin uh, compute uh, network for some of these things, like imagine having data DAOs with decentralized AI and ML. I mean, like the abilities there are kind of uh, crazy, uh, and obviously unlocking, unlocking GPU power in our system as well would be awesome. Um, all right. This is just an example, actually, of using uh, something like a distributed network for uh, attribution, so showing how Web3 can solve some of those AI problems. Uh, and this is the future of Lilypad. So one of the things that we're going to do next is deploy this to the IPC network. For those of you that haven't heard about it, we have a talk from Marco coming up, I believe, who will tell you all about how uh, scalable that network is going to be um, on that shortly. And we'll also be building out more robust test net and more use cases for you guys. Alrighty, and if you want to get in touch with us, this is our details. Feel free to hit us up in the Slack. We're pretty responsive there. Uh, and otherwise, you can go and have a look at more resources. We've got a uh, light paper. We've got examples in the docs. Uh, we release a project report weekly, weekly as well. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.